All right, welcome back. Now it is time to give a little season preview of our Florida State Seminoles. 13-0 going into the bowl game last year. Lose to Georgia in the bowl game. Coming back after getting shunned by the college football playoff committee in a, in a, in a dilemma they should have been in for sure. And we are back for the 2024 season. No better person to talk all things Florida State than the guy who will be calling all the action for the Seminoles on the Seminole uh, Sports Network, Mr. Jeff Colhane. Welcome back, sir. Jason, always a pleasure. And I know when uh, you give me a buzz, we're right around football season or something big's happening around Florida State Athletics. So excited to be back all with you. And man, looking forward to another season with this Florida State football team. It's going to be a good one. First and foremost, is the whole broadcast team back together this year? Same crew. Yep. Everybody back. William Barnon Floyd, who's now the longest tenured analyst in the history of the Seminole Sports Network. Uh, Tom Block, who, of course, our fans know and love really, really well. And uh, our guys uh, behind the scene, Chris Culp, our engineer, Andy Surratt, our spotter. Andy's in his 40th year wow. spotting on the Seminole Sports Network. So, uh, we call him the legend for a reason. So uh, we're excited to have a great crew back and Aria Masudi as well as our pregame halftime and postgame show host. So it's going to be a fun year. Very good. Very good. Before we get to the Knowles on the field, we got to talk a little. It's been a very, very colorful and decorative summer for the Seminoles and a couple other areas. Tell me about Luke Clanton. Boy, this guy's had an unbelievable summer on the PGA Tour, v variety of different events. He's on numerous leaderboards. Give me a little give me a little something on Luke Clanton. I wish I had Luke Swing. Man. <laughs> He's a rock star and uh we are really happy for him, proud of him, really excited he's coming back to be a part of Trey Jones's program. Um, you know, another top 10 finish at the Wyndham Championship on Sunday. Uh, two top 10 finishes back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, first amateur to do that on the PGA Tour since the late 1950s. I mean, he, he's been a, an absolute rock star. So he's making everybody that uh, wears the garnet and gold proud. And we're going to be talking about Luke Clanton a long time on the PGA Tour because he is just starting to scratch the surface with this capability. And, you know, certainly in the Olympics as well, uh, Jason, there's, you know, so many great student athletes that represented Florida state uh, across the pond in Paris and, you know, the women's soccer team with three knolls on that squad, uh, winning a gold medal and um, pretty special stuff. It's been a pretty fun summer, like you said, for FSU athletics. Awesome. Yeah. Like I said, again, you, I watched the women's match the other day, and it was a tremendous finish. And again, what, what Luke's doing on the on the golf tour, and the, he did some great thing in the major in the majors earlier in the summer as well. So great things going on uh, in, at FSU with, with current players and alumni. So uh, keep keeping it up, keeping it going great. All right, let's get to the football field. Is the message from Coach Norvell is this a revenge tour? Or does he want to turn the page a little bit and say this is a new team? We got to we got to carve our own path here in twenty twenty four. Yeah, I think the revenge tour stops for for us, uh, for fans, for media. Um, I, I don't think that it is a daily talking point for this football team. You know, Mike Norvell has talked about publicly when they sat down for their first team meeting when they got back from the bowl game and getting ready for tour of duty in January that he didn't have to say a thing about what had just happened. And so um, this is a focus group. Uh, motivated. I think the returners uh, obviously have that taste in their mouths. Uh, the, the newcomers know what happened and they want to kind of, you know, they want to put their mark and, and put their stamp and leave their mark on this football program uh, as, as well as they can. And so, you know, this has always been a team that has never listened to the outside noise or expectations or media telling them this is their ceiling or this is what they're capable of. And you've seen the rise of this program over the last two years, Jason, going 23 and four in the last 27 games. So uh, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of that going on. It's just the expectation in this building that this program and the players and coaches hold themselves to the accountability every day uh, is one that's at a national championship caliber. 
which is where it should be after, again, Coach has done such a great job rebuilding this whole infrastructure and everything that Florida State was and will always be, but what it was in the glory days, he's done such a great job re, 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 rebranding it back to what it was and what it should be. All right, let's talk a little bit about the um, – the schedule a little bit. You you've got it. You've got the interesting, cool nugget. You guys are going to be kind of the prime time game on August twenty fourth. You guys going over to Dublin, Ireland. I know you and I were talking. Your first trip overseas for a game, cool cool event. It's a conference game, so a little more little more energy and a little more emphasis on the game, even more so. Just talk about the uh, preparation of having to go overseas. You guys are leaving middle of the week next week. That, that interesting logistics and all that. Just talk about this experience that's coming up going to Dublin. Yeah, it's a big operation, and it really helps, Jason, that, you know, this staff has people like uh, Bruce Warwick, who is the assistant AD for football, who has been in the NFL and has had to travel these trips with some of the teams he's been a part of over to, to the you know, to Europe for regular season games. And um, Scott Trulock, who's, you know, the, the head uh, of, of all athletic training for FSU football, uh, has done this in the NFL as well. And so you got some experience here behind the scenes. That's very important and trying to pull this off and make this, I mean, coaches, as we know, are just absolute creatures of habit and they want every day and every minute to be as routine and normal as possible. Well, there, there's not a whole lot of routine and normal about playing over in Dublin for your first game. Right. So trying to recreate that has been very important and having these great, you know, great people behind the scenes, a part of the staff, they, they've really done an unbelievable job of making this as easy and as seamless as a, of a process uh, as possible. So, you know, as far as the matchup, I think it's going to be a great game. Uh, Georgia Tech is really looking to leave their mark here. And, um, you know, this Florida State football team uh, with a lot of talent and plenty of returners, but certainly plenty of newcomers that are looking to answer questions that many on the outside have on the field, um, they got to be ready to go and, and they'll be ready to play. Uh, but this Georgia Tech team, you know, looking at them over the weekend, uh, their offensive line, they returned four or five starters off of last year and bring in uh, a, you know, an, an all conference USA uh, interior offensive lineman from Middle Tennessee State from Rick Stockstill's uh, team yeah. a couple years ago. Uh, Haynes King statistically is the best returning starting quarterback in the league. Uh, you know, Jamal Haynes at running back is coming off a great season. And then Eric Singleton and Malik Rutherford and Christian Leary are three tremendous wideers. So this offense for Georgia Tech, yeah. it, really, they are not introducing anything new. Uh, they've got a lot of key players back. Their defense is where they need some help. And they brought in Tyler Santucci from Duke, who was on Mike Elko staff and that, and they're one of their best teams ever a year ago yep. uh, to fix their defense. They, they were not very good uh, to say the least last season. So uh, one heck of a matchup and uh, one way, one great way uh, to start off this season, a once in a lifetime type of experience where I know a lot of memories are going to be made for Knowles fans over in Dublin. Yeah. And you look, look in the schedule a couple weeks later, Mike's old team Memphis comes to town, kind of a, 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 a comeback, a, a little a little uh, reunion of, of, of or sorts between Mike and his old program. Then you got three looking at the schedule again. Again, no game is it's no game is a given, of course. But if you look at the schedule, they got they you guys got three three games in October, two October games, and then obviously the game in November. You're home to Clemson. You're at Miami and at Notre Dame. Those are your kind of three monster tests that if you can navigate at least two out of those three, if not all three then you're, you're going to be in great shape going to head into the ACC uh, t title game. All big games. Uh, like you said, you know, I, I, I look at this, you look at the schedule on paper, it, it is perceived to be manageable, but man, there's some landmines in here. You know, there really are yep. with these first two, you know, two ACC games right out of the gate. Right. You got to be ready to go. Bill O'Brien's new head coach at Boston college. He, he to me he's an upgrade there for them Memphis he talked about that uh Cal's coming in with nothing to lose in in one of their first ACC games I'll tell you what the game at SMU at the end of September yeah. is their first ACC home game sneaky road game sneaky that's gonna be game. Yep. it's a good team and a, and a tough game on the road I mean that that's gonna be one that'll be very challenging at the end of September so 
early in the year, you're going to be battle tested, even though there isn't that that you know big name marquee matchup. I guess you would say um, like an LSU from a season ago. So test it early. Uh, Clemson, uh, you know, you go to Duke on a Friday night. You're at Miami. Mentioned Notre Dame, obviously. Um, and, and certainly the Florida game at the end of the year, no matter what happens with their season, you can't overlook it. So, uh, it's a schedule that looks manageable on paper, but man, you gotta be ready to play and you gotta stay as healthy as possible throughout the year. What was the sense when you were at ACC media days? Do they, does the ACC think they're going to, they're going to be able to get more than one team in this year? I mean, what's kind of the general sense of the strength of the conference? Well, that's, I mean, that's the hope, obviously. And, you know, the league's issue is you, you got to continue to overcome the SEC narrative and the Big Ten narrative. And you got to win, at, at, you know, you, you got to almost dominate non-conference. You know, you can't lose. The Virginia Techs can't lose to Marshall. Right. And, and you got to have your teams that are supposed to win, win their non-conference games. And there's going to be chances, uh, you know, during during this first month or so for the league to do that. Um, you know, NC State's playing Tennessee yeah. uh, in a neutral site game. Clemson's got Georgia and Atlanta. That's a huge ask. But Miami, it's not, Florida. Miami, you know, Florida. Miami and Florida, exactly. So um, you got chances to go out and do it. And so, uh, you know, look, I'll be honest with you. After last December, I I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right, so, I, know right? I mean, everybody says 12 is going to be better, Jason. I'm not so sure if you're not in those big two leagues, if it's, if it's better for you, right. ultimately. And so that's why, you know, winning the ACC championship is paramount in Charlotte, no matter what your record is during the regular season. You win in Charlotte, you get there and win, you get a top four seed in a bye right. in the playoff. And so I would much rather do that then leave it up to the committee where we know you just you, you just don't know how it all works out at the end of the day. All right, let's get to on the field. Let's look at the offense a bit. Not not probably as active maybe as they were last year in the transfer pool, but but some key additions. Quarterback DJ, I'm going to call him DJU because I could I'll, I'll let you handle the pronunciation and the spelling next week in uh, Dublin. DJU, who obviously we know from Clemson and Oregon State, had a, has had a good pretty good career replacing Jordan Travis. Roy Dell Williams comes in at running back. Malik Benson comes in at wide receiver. Both those kids from Alabama. And then you got the, the legend son, Marvin Jones Jr., comes in from Georgia to really fortify the defense a little bit. Just talk about the new the new additions to the to the roster and how they how they fit in to the program. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good new pieces in the portal and and really, really strong candidates as well as true freshmen that could right. potentially play that have had excellent fall camps. And um, I throw Jalen Brown in there from LSU, a wide receiver, Earl Little Jr. as well from Alabama at Nickelback, um, Sione Lolohea at defensive end, Oregon State transfer, um, you know, Grady Kelly from Colorado State, defensive tackle. Cam Riley from Auburn at linebacker at 6'4", 240, can run with wide receivers um, and, and fill the box as well. So the portal, again, was was kind to Mike Norvell and this coaching staff. And um, you, you have to – the big task, obviously, as it always is in this era, is meshing your new pieces with the returning stars that you have. And so, you know, DJ Uyungulale, I'm excited to see what he and Coach Norvell can do together. Because one of the many great things that Mike Norvell does, especially on offense, is he knows how to grab the talents of the players that are on his in his unit and and work that offense around them very well. And, you know, everybody feels like they they know what the book is on DJ. I can't wait for him to have a better year than what people are anticipating. I think people are really sleeping on this kid because he is as talented as anybody in all of college football with a skill set. So, you know, this group I feel like is really strong up front on the offensive and defensive lines. The secondary might be uh, the best position group, which is crazy when you lose guys like Renardo Green and Jari and Jones and, and Akeem Dent as veteran players that have played a ton here. So uh, it's a group that's got all the talent they need to win the ACC and get to the college football playoff. Now it's just on them to bring it all together and play their brand of football. One question on DJ. What's the one trait or one skill set that he really, if he could copy from Jordan Travis last year, what's the one, 
whether it's leadership, whether it's, you know, just the way he manages the the, 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 the huddle, what's the one or two things that DJ really needs to do well, if he can do those things that he can, he can kind of em, emulate what, what Jordan did last year. I think taking care of the football and, and DJ's done a good job of that during his career, but continue to do that. You know, Jordan was amazing at the time of his injury. I think he had thrown maybe two interceptions to 20 touchdowns last year, 24 touchdowns and um, turnovers were not an issue at all for this team. And sometimes you take that for granted when you have a veteran quarterback and a group that, that handles, you know, that aspect of the game so well. And so uh, very cliche, but I would say take care of the football the way Jordan did and improve in your accuracy the way Jordan did as well. He was obviously no by no means a finished product as a passer when he arrived at Florida State. Right. But with the coaching, the development, his belief in himself, uh, he, he showed you what quarterbacks can do in this system with his coaching staff from a developmental standpoint. And I think DJ is right in line with that, if not more talented than Jordan as a quarterback and what he can do throwing the ball. This is going to be an interesting year for, on, on the offensive side. Dude, they've lost so much offensive production with the quarterback, with the receivers, the tight ends gone, the running one of the, half the running back rooms gone. How do you think that chemistry is going to is going to materialize? Obviously, early in the year, you got two conference games right out the gate. You don't really have a warm up game or a, you know a perceived uh, non conference warm up game. How do you think the chemistry of all of that stuff coming together? I think it'll be great because I think this team has the best offensive line they've had under Mike Norvell since this group, this coaching staff has been here. Most talented, by far the deepest, uh, by far. Yeah. I think you're looking at nine, 10 deep. And now you've got guys at center. You've got, you know, Jacob Rizzi, the Harvard transfer, uh, Andre Otto, uh, others where Darius Washington can, can focus on one position and play a left tackle if Marie Smith gets nicked up. And so plenty of depth up front. And I think that's what you lean on when you're trying to bring some new you know, pieces together. You lean on your offensive line. I think you could really see a Florida State offense run the football similarly to what they did two years ago, Jason, when they led the ACC in rushing mm -hmm. at 215 yards per game. So talented running back group, no headliner, although I think Lawrence Toffoli is ready to take up that label. Yep. Um, but lean on that offensive line early in the year and let everything else come together. And, and also obviously rely on that defense, which I think is going to pick up where they left off at the end of the season. What's the one position group that, that, uh, that if they can improve a little bit, that'd be tremendous improvement, but if they can just elevate their play just a little bit, this Florida state team is national championship ready and ready to go. Uh, I think it's wide receiver. You know, you got to have guys get open in this offense. You got to have guys catch the ball, make plays, um, like you said, you lose a lot when you lose Keon uh, and Johnny, um, just from an overall stature standpoint, when they run out there at six, seven and right. you know, six, four and six, seven. Right. So I think wide receiver, I, I think you need Malik Benson to, to really take that, that big step in his collegiate career as the guy with, I think everybody believes he has the capability of doing, it's just when is his turn? And, and right now it is. It's it's his turn. Hakeem Williams, can he, you know, can he turn it up and, and get it going in his true sophomore year? Some veteran guys that have played a lot of football around here, but, you know, need more consistency out of them. Ja'Kai Douglas, Kentron Portier, Darion Williamson, Deuce Span. All those guys can play. Uh, Jalen Brown from LSU. So, number of guys, and I think Elijah McCoy, the true freshman from the D.C. area, is a 6'4", bigger body receiver that's had a great camp, maybe could see him get some action in certain situations. So uh, I'll say wide receiver. I think the lines of scrimmage are going to be very good. I think DJ is going to be good enough. This team will be able to run the ball. Secondary is great. I think the linebackers are better than what people think. If the wide receivers can, can get open and make big plays, this is going to be a, a very, very good football team. Last thought. Give me a quick thought on the kicking game. Obviously, that's uh, something I'm, I, I keep an eye on. Uh, give me a thought on the on the punter and the kicker in the return game. Outstanding. I mean, an area we shouldn't have to worry about with Ryan Fitzgerald and Alex Mastromano. Like, uh, I, you know, I haven't done it, dug into it completely, but not I can't imagine not many one two punches better uh, in college football than those two guys from a veteran and experience and execution standpoint. So tremendous. And keep an eye on a guy named Jalen Lucas, newcomer to this team, Ja'Kai Douglas, his brother. Uh, he is a stick of dynamite. I'm telling you, 
Not the biggest guy in the world, but if he gets a crease, nobody's catching him. And so Jalen Lucas is going to be one of those big play type of guys that he, if he gets in the open field, it's going to be six points for this group in the return game and, and certainly on the offensive side of the ball as well. We'll tell all the fans where they can find the great coverage you guys are going to be putting on from Dublin all throughout the year, Seminole Sports Network, all over, yep. all over the world. Tell, tell them where they can find all the, 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 the on-demand and live coverage. Yeah, no, we appreciate that. Seminoles.com uh, on the web. We got our statewide network uh, around the Southeast as well. Our Seminole Radio Network affiliates are so great to us. And, you know, encourage everybody to download the FSU Game Day app. You can listen to us wherever you're at in the world, no matter what's going on. Download that FSU Game Day app and uh, you'll be able to catch catch us uh, having some fun on the audio and radio side with this Florida State football team. Well, Jeff, have a great trip to Dublin. Have a great year. Don't have too many Guinnesses. No Guinnesses on game day until after the W in Dublin, okay? That sounds good. I think I can handle that. That sounds good. <laughs> we'll that we'll sounds be in touch good. during the year at some point. Keep up the great work, you and Bar None and the crew, and let's get let's get Florida State back into that, into that playoff picture where they were rightfully deserved to be last year. I'm with you there, Jason. Always appreciate talking to you and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody in Dublin here uh, next weekend. Go Knowles. Have a great week, sir.